the third and final season of Stars Vita uh, airs on April 26th. I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with one of the show's stars, Michelle Prada. And Michelle, you know, the character of Emma, when we meet her in season one, she's very much this type. Um, and she has grown and changed uh, so much throughout the three seasons of the, of the show. And so, you know, what do you think is the biggest change uh, in Emma uh, without giving anything away into what we're going to see in season three? Acceptance. I think that is part of what the biggest change that you see for this person. Uh, she lives in a world of very black and white, A to Z, this is the way that things go, and then kind of holding people accountable for not, uh, I mean, even something as simple as maybe not loving her or not doing the thing that they're supposed to do. And at some point she's learned with Lynn that life doesn't work that way and with Cruz and with Nico and all of the relationships is the only thing we can control is ourselves and we have to just accept what's around us. Um, and I think that we see a version of her and as an actor, it was really great to kind of get to put on this other kind of color palette for her because and still have her be her, but be, I don't know, just more looking around and, and, and not trying to control the people around her. Yeah, and that, that element of control uh, certainly extends into her relationship with her sister, Lynn. And and so the, the dynamic there between you and Melissa Barrera is, is to me such a such a lived in, you know, authentic relationship. How has your guys' personal and working relationship evolved over these these last three years? It's I mean, it's authentic because that's you know, Melissa for me is a sister and I really, really feel like working with her has created such a beautiful bedrock of what I hope to continue um, in, you know, other projects that I'm moving on to uh, because it, I, I feel like it's something that you're not just seeing, you feel it when you watch us on screen together, because I know, you know, it's it's not easy as an actor. Sometimes you have good days and days where the muses just show up and sing around you and you're like, yay. <laughs> and then days where you're just like, hello, am I alone in this? Like what is happening? And it's nice to have another actor that you get to, that you feel supported by and realize that you're not alone. Because, you know, some of the stuff that we both do on the show is very emotionally revealing and it's scary to kind of expose yourself emotionally so so raw and and that yeah you know, I'm I'm glad to hear that it that it does transfer to the viewer because I mean it's it's one of the most supportive uh you know acting partners I've ever I've ever had. Her and Roberta to me are just Roberta Calindros who plays uh Nico, my love interest. Uh I'm 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 so lucky to have gotten to work with two people that, I mean, we're still, I mean, we, we text each other almost every day. <laughs> it's going to get weird when we're not working together and we're like unhealthily obsessed with each other. But, um, but yeah, it's, and it, you know, I, I think it really shows and the safety of being on set and getting to work together because we, you know, man, you think it's scary to do stunts and everything, but, you know, emotional stunts and like ripping yourself open to essentially bleed and suffer in front of each other is is really scary in life and getting to feel like there's a safe place and someone there that's holding you in those spaces um, is, is beautiful. Uh, and the show makes so many different demands on you. Is there is there a type of scenario in playing this role that has been the has been the biggest challenge for you? I think it's not so much a challenge, but a opportunity for growth because this, you know, when I first met Golder Green, and this was my first TV show, it still is, but it was, you know, that was, it was just a lot that I didn't know and that I was kind of learning on the job and growing. You can prepare for stuff. You can go to acting classes and you can, you know, do um, small roles here and there, but nothing really prepares you for leading a TV show and being, uh, you know, really kind of showing up emotionally in those things. So I think what 
I learned throughout this time is really trusting myself and speaking up for myself and understanding where my boundaries are because, I mean, obviously there's a lot of sex on the show and there's a lot of, you know, places that we go uh, emotionally that are really difficult. Like in season two, I, Emma has to have a panic attack and I used to get panic attacks. And so I was like, oh, I understand like where this comes from. But as we we're shooting, I started actually having a real panic attack and realizing, <laughs> oh gosh, I want to like obviously keep you going because I feel like this is good for the work and for the show. But then understanding where my boundaries are after that being like, okay, well, I need to take care of myself as me in that place. And, and, uh, and, you know, sexually, even with this season, uh, we, I mean, well, all the seasons we kind of really are have to be very fearless and we push the boundaries and move towards a place of agency and for women having much more uh, just confidence in their sexuality. But even the season, there was a scene that kind of as written, I didn't feel completely comfortable with and being able to go to the producers and to um, Tanya Siracho, who is the showrunner and them being supportive and rewriting the scene so that it wasn't something that I had to be, feel like I was being pushed to do something that I just didn't really feel comfortable with. And that's exactly the next place I was going to go because having talked to Tanya Saracho, um, you know, she does have such a, such a clear voice uh, mm -hmm. in this show and her stamp is all over it. Uh, what has your relationship with her been like and has it has it changed over the course of the series well i mean when i came on i was a fan of uh her as a playwright she wrote a play called fade that i really 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 love so i was getting you know excited to get to work with somebody that i think had written something that i had never even seen before and then as we continued on as obviously she was a showrunner, but she she became a family member. And as with anything, you know, you and especially your she works like fully with who she is. And, you know, I'm learning a lot. So it's like, you know, things have like you have like family moments, you know, where you're just like, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with this, and anything, but you like still come back together and uh and you know, essentially all all things serve the show that was always the most important thing so it's like i have so much respect for her because she is a force and what she was able to do and how she made the show what it is is so beautiful because it's not just what you see it's also behind the behind the camera and having you know it's like someone can be a trailblazer just by being who she is a latina showrunner but really choosing to give people opportunities and myself included uh, that hadn't you know been seen before I think shows and and honestly like even from the producers like Robin Schwartz is uh, one of the producers of Big Beach and she brought me on to uh, shadow one of their other shows sorry for your loss because I wanted to move into producing and having like just all of those pieces being built in the way that the show is being made is something that I think is obviously like the storytelling and the acting and all that stuff is great but like there's something so incredible about feeling the support that comes even when it's not just the cameras rolling and what's so fascinating about the show is that the show does so much. It tells so many different types of stories, you know, just, not just Latinx stories, but also queer stories. But it never seems like it's it's trying to shine a spotlight. It's just it just is yeah. like it, it never stops to try to explain to the audience like, oh, this is what we're talking about. It just trusts the audience to come in with it. Um, is that something that is that something that you want to carry forward in the other types of projects you take on? particularly if as if you go into producing? Yeah, totally. I think there's something really important about this time that we're living in to really encourage each other to tell our stories. And uh, yeah, so absolutely moving forward. I mean, I think that's what's really beautiful also about Vida is that if you were invited into someone's house, no one's gonna be overly explaining to you what things are you know you just exist and you are so with this show being based in Boyle Heights and it being obviously a Mexican American story but it's an American story if you were to come over to someone's house they're not going to kind of translate everything for you every moment they may kind of give you 
a little bit of a heads up, but you, you get invited. It's an invitation. It's not preaching to you or anything. It's an invitation to, to get to know a part of uh, LA and a part of humanity that is very normal, but you may not have been exposed to. And I think finding yourself reflected in faces that might not look like yours or people that may not have grown up in the same way that you have. I know growing up, I, you know, felt like I would watch like maybe like Sex in the City or something. My life was nothing like any of those women, but I would like see myself reflected in one way or another. So I'm excited for the idea that especially with this third season, we get to talk more about different things uh, that have to do with the queer and Latinx communities for people to see themselves reflected, even if they aren't from these communities, because it's an invitation to get to know a part of uh, an American story that might not be something that you grew up with. I, I you know, it's, it's always interesting to talk to somebody uh, on the final season of a show uh, where you've gotten to know the character. Um, is there a moment in any of the seasons, and it could even be from this coming season, um, is there a moment where you look back and go, I nailed that? Or does that, <laughs> does that, ever, does that ever come into your head? Because I've, I've asked that question and actors have different responses to it. Um, wow, that's a really great question. I have a hard time watching myself. And I... I don't know. I I haven't watched all of it. Um, I definitely, I, I will say this. I feel like when I'm not watching myself try to nail it is usually when I, when things are great. Because when I watch myself, watch the story and I get lost in the story and get lost in the other characters and all of that stuff, that's when I feel like, wow, there's something really wonderful there because it's not about Oh, did I blink twice? Or why did I look to the left? I should have looked to the right or whatever. Because I also feel like, I mean, I, I like to try to, I mean, I don't always succeed, but I like to try to feel an uninhibitedness when you're in the moment and in the scene. And maybe you, you know, your face does something weird or like, oh, I don't like that angle. But that's also kind of part of life. And I think, you know, as women and as women in Hollywood, there's this, you know, pressure, I guess, or this idea that you have to look a certain way or be a certain thing. But there's also something amazing about being kind of awkward and messy and not looking perfect all the time. And uh, and that's, that's, that's you know, I, that's usually when I go for it or when something's kind of like weird. And I'm like, oh, I love that. Like it caught that weird thing because it's just something like different and it's maybe moving the way that we look at scenes and performances from a way that like is just like, oh, I wanna make sure I look like perfect all the time. Um, going back to the question, I, I don't know. I, I guess I don't, I don't, I, 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 there are times where I've like finished an episode and I've been like, wow, I'm really proud of it. Or I know I saw the second episode of this season and I was just, bawling at the end of it and I get really proud of like seeing other people's performances and um but yeah I don't know maybe maybe one day I'll be able to be like yeah I nailed that um <laughs> but I'm always like oh interesting I wish I had done that or whatever but I've also like even watching the first season of either that first episode I can't get through that first episode crying at the end of it so I feel like if it's bringing an emotional response to me and I was there and I know that it's pretend that maybe, maybe that's a good thing. As I was, I was thinking as I was watching the finale episode that, um, you know, this whole series started with, with the character of Vita, your character's mother mm -hmm. passing away. Um, and without spoiling anything, um, what do you think Emma would want to say to Vita at the end of the show? I understand. I think, and it's it's man. I feel like the 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 storyline still feels strong in my body because I I I feel that this season we everybody's carrying a struggle that we know nothing about, and even our parents. We feel like we know them so well, but we meet them after what twenty thirty years of life, like at the point that we come in. 
And then it takes another, I mean, sometimes 20 years for you to have enough life experience to understand where they're coming from. And as much as we want to know, there's still a mystery to us because they've lived so much life. And I think with this season, we see that Viva is a human being and, and we, like Emma's painted this idea of her, an idea of what she experienced. And even Lynn and Emma both, ha they were raised by the same woman, but both had completely different experiences. And, and that's something that's so powerful for us as, as people, because you can be a, a son, you can be a husband, you can be, a a teacher, a writer, and all of them are you, but everybody maybe experiences this different uh, version of you. And and with this season, we really see the generational struggle that each of them had and that Vida really also was suffering through so much pain and had been hurt so strongly and was literally just doing the best that she could with the hand that she was given the same way that Emma was. So. I think that in the end, it may not be I forgive you, but I get it. And I think if we can even do that for each other and as we go through life, I think, and if anybody can take away that, um, I think it'd be really beautiful. It really is a beautiful way to, to end the series. And um, uh, uh, it's always, always a pleasure to talk to you, Michelle. Congratulations. Um, everybody go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the Emmy. Stay tuned for more uh, throughout the season. Uh, Michelle, congratulations. Uh, take yeah. care. Bye.